Max. Um, all right, that changes my presentation. Um, <clears throat> so let me kind of minimize Zoom. Uh, we have some of the folks on our team uh, dialed in so they can watch this too. Uh, I have, as part of this uh, day, one of the first wireless SOCs that support uh, RISC-V. So I'm gonna try to show a tiny little box to everyone here, but this is from Espressif. It's the ESP32C3. Um, they've been hard to get, but uh, apparently uh, they just had a truckload go to Mauser and DigiKey, so you can buy some of these. Uh, hopefully like, it's still in stock. And probably for the near term, this is gonna be the most affordable RISC-V based SOC uh, and for most people. Like, I think it's $8 for the dev kit and uh, a little less for the module. Uh, and so up until now, we've had limited devices you can try RISC-V on. So most of the Zephyr work was done in FPGAs and on, on the um, sci-fi boards um, and only the core. So this is really exciting because it's the first IoT device that supports RISC-V and Zephyr. <clears throat> and so I was gonna we're going to see it working. And I have a backup in case I can't get it to work. But I'm actually going to try to compile and flash a device and get it on the network. So I'm brave, but uh, I have a backup device just in case. But since most people haven't seen Zephyr or tried Zephyr themselves, I'm going to do a little bit of a walkthrough, um, a, a speed run through uh, getting uh, your first project done. So I already have it on my machine. I'm not going to show you how to set it up, but this is the you know normal Zephyr environment. So you can see that we have a bunch of uh, um, subsystems on the modules. You have the, the core, uh, the core kernel, things like that. Uh, I'm going to do this part of the command line, and then we're going to do the last part with uh, with our IoT platform, Goliath. But once we get there, we'll get there. So uh, the very first thing you need to know about um, to use Zephyr is the meta tool. It's called West. Very powerful. Um, it does a whole bunch of stuff. It, it bootstraps the tool chain, the, the build system, interfaces with all the different compilers that may come from vendors, uh, and it makes it super easy to work with Zephyr, as well as program and, and debug and test all of the things. Uh, I'm not going to show all the capabilities because it's actually a, a pretty neat tool, but just an example, um, which kind of highlights Oh boy, I need to find a good spot for this bar. Um, both Zephyr and West, uh, if you type in West boards, or at least the build I have on my machine, these are all the boards that are currently supported by, by Zephyr. And out of the box, we'll work with all the samples in the Zephyr repo. Um, it is a, uh, a mono repo, so you do a lot of your development in tree, but you can do it out of tree. And uh, well, these are a lot of different uh, architectures. Um, and we can dig into uh, one of the architectures that we care about, which is RISC-V. So uh, let's see if I can find it in this giant list. It's going to be under ESP32, I think. You can see the high five boards there. And anybody see it? Yeah, so ESP32, uh, see, that's the dev kit I have on. So if I was going to build a project um, uh, I think I want to go to Zephyr. It's hard to do this one hand, but I'm going to try. Um, Blink. All right, I think we're going to under basic. And then Blink. Um, actually, I'm going to use do uh, Hello World. Reason why is because I don't think the Blinky LED is wired yet. So we're doing everything uh, hot and live. Okay, so that's where the um, all your samples to be found. And I'm going to run the build command through West. Let's see if I can. Um, yeah, let's do uh, samples. Um, I expect to, uh, to do all this stuff, but here we go. This fails. It's all, it's all good, everyone. Um, so Ziffer samples. And then we're going to do hello world. And if all things go well, West build, it just magically calls into uh, the build system that's already configured for this particular um, board. Uh, P is pristine, so it's gonna do a fresh build from scratch, and then it's gonna go, go build that sample. Um, if everything works, we're gonna uh, have to see it compiling. Um, the board is found, it's generating the, the kick config files, it's compiling kernel stuff. Uh, now it's doing some ESP IDF stuff, so um, from Express themselves, they maintain and support it. Uh, and now it's built. So the executable, uh, here's where the, the exciting part will happen. Plugging in a brand new board that I haven't touched yet. And with the magic of maintained <laughs> compilers, 
I'm going to plug it in. And if all things are well, you'll be able to see the flashing of my device, but all I have to do is West flash. Fingers crossed. It automatically found it. It is writing it to the sections of memory, and that works. So uh, that's, that's the developer experience for Zephyr. So a little bit of round of applause for all the maintainers who make that possible. And uh, yeah, this, this device, which you can't really see, is running, um, is running um, Zephyr already. So now I'm going to switch it to uh, our, our demo. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, a Goliath, we're an IoT platform startup. And we do device connectivity, device management, uh, and firmware updates and things like that for Zephyr-based devices. Um, this is our console. I already have some, a bunch of test devices, and I have my backup one just in case something goes awry. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we set up a device with our platform. So this is not a vendor pitch, but it'll help us uh, show you the IoT parts of Zephyr. Um, and I'm going to go add a new device create uh, with some credentials. These are some concepts from, from our world, but um, no matter, we're gonna name it uh, ELC Zephyr. Oops. All right, uh, I'm gonna get a, a pre-share key. I'm gonna create a super secret, secret. Um, hopefully no one uh, Guesses that. Um, and great. Now the device is provisioned in our cloud, but there's no code running on, on this particular device yet. So I'm going to hop over. I had some movie magic. Um, and using all the capabilities of Zephyr, for example, kconfigs to uh, provision our devices with the build system, I can go in, put in the um, device ID we just created, the PSK ID, uh, and that's super secret. Secret. All right. Um, and we use kconfigs and kconfigs to make that possible. We use all the subsystems within, uh, within Zephyr, such as Zephyr's logging. Uh, and we can talk about that later, but um, I'm gonna say that and go back to our example. Now, Zephyr has a really rich module subsystem and different ways you can integrate uh, different components, whether it's device drivers, networking, or your own application. So we are a Zephyr module. And so I will uh, double back up and I remember all the paths. So you go to uh, modules and then uh, our module. Sorry, that's the wrong path. What error is it? Um, this is why live demos are always a risk. And then modules here. Um, I should have copied and pasted from our docs. One second. Um, docs. We have a documentation site, so it's all the bootstrapping for, uh, for Zephyr. And then quickly just go to the ASP32 docs. And a module is live Goliath. Great, 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 great. Um, lib. The modules lib. There we go. All right, so now we're in the Zephyr, um, this is our, our, our module in uh, Zephyr, so it works like any other module. Um, it can get built with our SDK, and we're going to now flash this particular example. Very similar to the previous example, except our samples are part of our module. Let me just go grab that up, and this is the hello example. Um, I'm going to go build it, so pristine build. Hopefully everything is still working, uh, and you can see it's using all the same subsystems. Uh, yeah, that's, don't worry about the warnings. And um, embed TLS, which is a part of the security functionality, and uh, we take advantage of that. The IP stack, which is built in Zephyr, we just get to use that for free, which is amazing. Uh, most embedded operating systems don't include an IP stack. And build, 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 a couple more um, modules, linking, and now we have this Hello World example. And if all things go well, we do the same West flash. So same device, I didn't unplug it or plug it back in. And we'll see it back in the Goliath console how the name, um, the name should show up with some data. A little bit bigger application. And now it should be reset and connected. Fingers crossed. Um, you can cross anything you can to help make sure the demo works well. Uh, we see the 
device is now showing up on our device list because we manually created and let's go check out the logs and there we go so you can see that this device we just created um, is talking to goliath cloud sending device logs using the goliath sorry the zephyr logging subsystem with our cloud backend and streaming zephyr level logs as well as goliath level logs uh, all running on a risk cloud device so that's the demo end to end going from a brand new board flashing with uh, Zephyr and all the uh, IoT functionality and talking to the live cloud. So there's your 101 in Zephyr and IoT. So thanks everyone. Is there a question? Uh, you can sign up at Goliath.io. We're currently in public beta. Thanks, James. Yes. So it's the ESP32 C3. Which um, Espressif is a manufacturer. It's a it's a wi Wi-Fi based wireless device. It actually also has Bluetooth in it as well. But we're using Wi-Fi in this particular demo. Yeah, well, it, it's a, it actually has both the Risk Five SOC and all the well, wireless peripherals around it, all in one. Well, I can show you the little device if you want to see it. And this particular is a dev board. The module, which is the size of a U.S. stamp, um, has all that functionality built in. Which is pretty nice. I guess I'm taking more questions if there's any more. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, that's a, that's a good question. Um, the, uh, yeah, for those who are watching about TLS security, um, and this is more of a Goliath specific question, but I'm, I'm happy to also talk about um, Zephyr. So Zephyr has a few different subsystems around um, cryptography. Uh, in particular, uh, the most well-supported is Embed TLS. Embed TLS is an open source um, TLS uh, implementation used by a lot of uh, embedded systems. And so we take advantage of Embed TLS so we can do uh, both TLS and DTLS uh, by default. So you actually can't even talk to Goliath Cloud without doing um, some form of TLS, which is, which is important for us. Yes. So that was a little bit of movie magic, but the, fortunately, um, West makes that possible. So West, the, the meta tool that's part of Zephyr, has a bunch of hooks and ways to either get um, Zephyr managed tool chains or from the vendors themselves. So Espressif maintains a plugin for, for West. And what you didn't see is me type in West update, um, Espressif update or, some, or update is, um, Espressif. And the Espressif team maintains their uh, RISC-5 tool chain. So it just, automatically gets downloaded, automatically updated in, in a dedicated area. And then you set an environment variable to say, I wanna use the Espresso Risk 5 tool chain or the ARM32 tool chain or whatever you might be doing. So tool chain management is actually part of the West tool, which makes it so easy to work with. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a Python based tool that you install as uh, when you get started. Um, and it sits on top of um, the build systems, if it's um, CMake or Make or whatever the particular vendor contributed, and then just manages it all for you. And because everything is in tree, it's either all there or gets downloaded by a plugin, which is which is really nice. How do you do debugging? I didn't show that demo, but there's also debugging capabilities. The the tool chains usually ship with some form of debugger. So, for example, a lot of devices support um, um, Open OCD. Open OCD, which works with GDB, allows you to do uh, on chip debugging. Um, and it will it'll just vary by device. So for example, um, this particular board doesn't have a JTAG header on it, but West and any tool chain that has that support can do step debugging. And actually, if I flip over just to type in those West commands again, there's a debug and a debug server and an attach. And so with each contribution, the tool chain maintainers or, or the, the, the target maintainers They'll, they'll wire that up. So just like I typed in West Flash, you didn't see me pass in, let's say a path to the device or any you know, um, baud rate configuration that you might usually do to program. That's automatically um, determined by, uh, by the system, which is super slick uh, and usually takes a long time. Same thing with debugging. So step debugging just, just kind of works magically, but it's not magic because people invest time to make it um, self-discover. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think 
Um, so if we actually go to the docs, um, every board that's supported is, is um, part of the requirements is to document. So you'll see um, up-to-date documentation as each new board gets added. And because of the breadth of architectures, you can see all the different architectures that are supported by Zephyr. Um, so we'll ignore the rest because uh, this is a risk five Zephyr day. But as new chipset vendors are creating uh, their risk, risk five implementations, uh, they're adding it to Zephyr. It's, it almost seems like if you're building a risk five board in let's say my Google controller class target, they're picking Zephyr as the starting point. They, they may support others, but uh, at least what I'm seeing is some of these are brand new. Some of these you can't even buy. Um, so it seems to be a, a preferred choice for, for risk five MCUs. I'll also call out, there's a couple um, non MCUs on here. Uh, and we see that more in growing in the ARM64 space where there's Cortex R's that are supported and a few Cortex A's. And I wouldn't be surprised if um, we see more RISC V um, sort of Linux class uh, processors. Good questions. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of tools uh, are using a web interface, but that I was calling, um, I was calling, driving on my phone um, a, a few weeks ago. I was doing it with my wife. Cool. Uh, are there any plans on doing this for the uh, I can't speak for the Zephyr project a, as a whole. Um, and a lot of the the focus of the Zephyr project, you know, as a as, a, as one of the members on, on, on the committee, um, is around the core infrastructure, like making it possible so people can build different developer experiences. Like, you know, we have our own module that we didn't have to build our own R RTOS on top of. Uh, and there's a working group with, within Zephyr around developer environments and developer experiences. And so they're looking at a lot of a, a lot of um, uh, options in that space. Uh, in, in the same time, because it's a, a project with lots and lots of scope. They don't want to pick one way of programming and say, well, this, this is the only way to program, or you must be a VI user or an Emacs user kind of thing. So it's definitely an area that's you know, actually being actively explored. Um, and with things like um, Gitpod and GitHub code spaces, which allow you to build and compile in the cloud, you know, programming is, is also part of that space. So the answer is there's no good solution today, uh, but it's, it's definitely being discussed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, that's an area that we're definitely investigating as well. Cool. Any other questions? Except for this five or otherwise? Jim. Thank you. <laughs> that's that, that's fair. Uh, James asking, you know, what prompted Glide, and um, you know, why are we here? Uh, a lot of the solutions that that we worked with in the past, or companies that um, our team has been at, have been really coming from the cloud world and not the hardware world. So the challenges of building embedded systems, you know, low power applications, bespoke protocols. A lot of the cloud vendors who focus on or support device management tend to take a generalized solution, you know, like a hyperscaler, and say, well. If we squint, we can get this, you know, Wi-Fi device to talk to our cloud. Or, oh, batteries, how big is your battery? Is, is it 5,000 milliamp hours? Sure. But in reality, a lot of embedded systems are very constrained and they come from, well, I have this particular device with this particular chipset, with this particular radio that needs to speak this particular protocol, with this particular um, battery and bandwidth budget. And when you start from, hey, everything's a server or cell phone, you really don't get a, a, the optimization you need on the device side. So we said, well, what if we start from the device up and say, how, how, how are people building IoT devices and make sure that we can build a cloud that more reliably, securely, and you know, in the ways that they want to do can, can connect. So that's why we started with Zephyr and built our system into Zephyr because realizing that device support and protocols and integration with IP stack is where we need to begin. So we say we're a, a cloud built for hardware as opposed to the other way around. Um, sorry, sorry for the vendor pitch, but uh, that, was, that was a question. <laughs> All right, that's great. Uh, thanks everyone.